going on guys? We are back with another video. It is a miserable day up here in Hayward, Wisconsin, but we do have some open water that we have now found. There's a whole bunch of ice shifting around. This year is the first year there's a catch and release bass season that opened April 1st and runs into our regular season. Typically, in previous years, the bass fishing was 100% closed, cannot target them this time of year. So today we are out here in the Hayward area. We have absolutely frigid water temps. Ice is literally going out as we're out here, and we're hopefully gonna catch some bass. The goal today is at least catch one fish, um, but I'm gonna kinda break it down, tell you guys where I'm starting to look for bass in this very cold water period, what we're using, all that good stuff. Um, so we're gonna punt over to the first spot here. We got a ton of wind, very cold out. Stay tuned, hopefully we catch a fish. All right, so where do you start looking for smallmouth in the spring? Well, there's kind of two different spots that a lot of times most guys think of when they're thinking about spring smallmouth. One is normally a shallow water bite when these fish start coming up into structure. Most of the time that happens when that water is kind of mid upper 40s, you might start seeing it start to happen. And uh, that is just way ahead of where we are right now. This is basically, you're still in your winter time frame. I got water temp that is 37, 38, kind of going back and forth. So we're targeting wintering areas for smallmouth this time of year. And generally what those are, some of your deeper humps, deeper points, and a lot of times you're either looking for rock or cribs. I can only get to about half the lake right now because of the ice. And uh, one of the spots that we're gonna fish today, where we're on right now, is a crib spot. Now I'll show you guys some side imaging here. And it's all sand with cribs mixed in, so I can see fish on my side imaging. So here's a snapshot, you can see some cribs, you can see some fish sitting next to the cribs, and uh, this is exactly what we're looking for. You know, the next thing we need to do is basically just figure out if those are smallmouth. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of fish that use cribs. So here's another screenshot right here. Again, you can see the cribs, you can see the fish, um, super easy to do. So the next thing we're gonna do is drop the Markham underwater camera down, uh, see what we see, kind of hopefully verify their smallmouth and start fishing. We have located the fish, and I'm actually using the underwater camera just to kind of see what we see. You know, there could be really anything here. There could be perch here. There could be walleyes here. Dropping a camera down is the only way you can absolutely know for sure. And uh, we use this a lot of times ice fishing, but it's great for kind of a couple different applications. One would be seeing fish that are very close to the bottom and like rock. They can't really mark on sonar or side imaging. And the other one's obviously fish identification. So, you know, I drop this thing down, immediately we see a smallmouth. Uh, there's another one right there on the screen. So it's pretty obvious, you know, we're around quite a few smallmouth. And uh, yeah, we're gonna start fishing now. So stay tuned. We're gonna spot lock up on these fish, kind of upwind and cast back to them. We'll see what happens. Not very big, but it is the first smallmouth of the season. Open water, water is 38 degrees, and uh, we caught that one on a Kalen's tube. Kind of that copper color. Not a big one, hopefully get a better one, but uh, it is cold. First fish on in the lake of the year. Take it down and letting it go, and then, yeah. Up on the tube. Also, not a very big fish, but two casts in a row. Take it. About the same size as the other one. Just a little male. But they will play an artificial fish. This is crazy cold. All they want to bite is just. Little guys, get a bigger one. Right on the bottom, pushing it, making it sit there. Three casts in a row, it is a two bite. Not big ones, but catching fish every cast is always a good thing. You know, we started out kind of fishing a drop shot and I had a few fish kind of peck at that, but few things are more productive 
then just fishing a straight tube in the water is really cold. It is cold. Look at that coming our way. Lots of ice. All right, so talking about baits for this kind of early season time frame, um, I like a lot of stuff that moves very, very slow for these smallmouth. They're not super active. You want something you can basically crawl along, whether that's a suspended bait or a bait on the bottom. So kind of my three favorites for sure. One, be a drop shot, some kind of drop shot presentation on there. The other one, some kind of swim bait I can reel very slowly and come in contact with bottom. And probably my favorite one, really whether we're talking spring or fall for this very cold water period, is just your simple tube. This is a Kalen's 3.5 inch tube, and uh, it's the color I like a lot. It's kind of like, a, I don't even know what you call that, it's almost like a mustard maybe, um, but works great up here in the lakes that I fish. And I'm fishing this on a seven foot one medium and uh, this is an Elliott rod, so I'll go ahead and link it down below. It's actually an extra fast model, but basically what you want is you want a rod that has a tip that has some flex, because basically the way we're working these, we're casting them out, we're letting them hit bottom, and we're just gonna be popping this thing so slow. And this time, we're always in contact with bottom. And this time of year, it's not gonna be like, boom, there's a bite. You're just gonna feel that rod tip load up. So you want something with a little bit of tip that can load up, and you kind of put some pressure on that to either see if it's a snag or a fish. And the reel we're using for this is the Pissy Fun Carbon X 2000, and just simply spooning that up with some 10 pound braid and uh, tying in a 10 pound floral leader. Four casts in a row. Tough to beat that. Not a big one. But look at this. The goal is to catch fish today. We've got ice all around us. Small mouth that four casts in a row. Can't complain too much about that. There he is. Another about 16 inch male. cast in a row we're at but a few this is a little bit better fish he's at least fighting a little bit better so go ahead and grab him here look at that that's crazy big ice sheet coming in fish on honestly i'm not much of a bass guy at all but uh, it is pretty much the only fish besides crappies that you can chase this time of year in the northern Wisconsin area, besides panfish, but panfish bite when it's 35 degrees out, it's probably less than ideal. Fish on. Could it be a better one? Huge, but we are getting them very constantly. Beauty, take them. Well, the time has come to move spots. The ice sheet broke away. We are now getting pushed by the ice. All right guys, well that'll do it for today. That was my first day out on an inland lake this year. And uh, the new catch and release bass season is pretty cool. I mean, uh, it's all catch and release, so really as soon as you got um, any kind of open water you guys can get out on, um, you know, get out there. We do, I don't fish for a lot of largemouth up here, but we have great smallmouth fisheries kind of all across northern Wisconsin and northern Minnesota. And uh, most of the time these fish are still gonna be deep in a lot of their wintering locations for now. But um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And uh, I'm not sure what we're gonna be doing next, but uh, we will be fishing tomorrow and we will be making a video tomorrow if we catch fish. So thank you guys for watching. If you're not yet, please subscribe and stay tuned for more content.